Hey there, fellow watch lovers. This is your host, Laz. Back at you again with another review, this time on the Corrugate Black Bay Homage. Um, and before I get started, I just kind of want to cover um, my reason for getting into um, into YouTube and doing these reviews on these timepieces, right? Um, you know, at one point, um, I, I was just a consumer that would uh, look at I mean, video after video after video of different kinds of watches, everything from the uh, Chinese entry level watches upwards of, you know, the uh, Rolexes and the, the, the APs and the paddocks, um, you know. So for me, it became a passion. And therefore, um, in terms of what's my watch collection, I'm looking to get more into the more... Um, the, the the higher end brands and not just higher end brands but the brands that have been in the game for um that that has history that that like seiko's orient tesol's hamilton's uh and eventually maybe even rolexes right um because it's more of a passion for me i feel like the watch is um it, it it's a uh, direct reflection of 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 your personality um you know the things that you like the things that you dislike so therefore that's the reason why i got into watches and the reason for me doing these reviews is to help you uncover are you wanting to be a watch collector or are you wanting to be someone who just like a timepiece for its fashion statement and and can care less about the specs and and, and how long that watch is going to last you well this video will help you uncover that all right uh, so we'll kick it off with some of the specs on this timepiece, um, one of which is being the uh, movement, uh, to Toyota movement, um, what movement it is precisely, I am not 100% sure, I have not been able to find anything online besides uh, information that says it's a Toyota movement with self-winding and hand-winding capabilities, uh, power reserve, 40, 40 hours, um, there is no seconds hacking, or no no hacking on this uh, on this movement um, as you can see when you pull out the crown all the way you you you, you continue to tick um, so that kind of sucks um, when you're trying to set precise timing um, and I just knocked it out of whack anyways yeah so that's something that uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a drawback for me you know I, I I'm one of those that really use my watch to tell time and so when I'm looking at it, especially when, when at work, um, to ensure that I'm clocking in and out um, and, or clocking in um, from lunches and stuff like that, I, I use my watch a lot for that. And if this is off by a few seconds, then um, yeah, I clock in early and that can cause me other problems. Anyways, um, continuing. So it is self, it is um, hand winding. Um, actually, I'll give you a sample of what that sounds like on the mic. Oh, it's very satisfying. Um, so yeah, um, you got your 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 winding there. It's a pretty good size crown too, so nice and grippy. Um, so yeah, case thickness. You have a thirteen mil thirteen mil thickness on this case from the top sapphire to the back of the screw down um, screw down back. Um, some some information online says it's twelve point five. Um, but I have measured it. It is 13 mil um, lug width. You're looking at a 22 millimeter lug width, um, which is not bad at all to find straps for it. Um, so, yeah, you also have a solid um, here. I'll bring it into move my coffee there. Um, you do have a solid stainless steel um, links. So you do get the oops, you do get the solid stainless steel links here. Um, this is a pretty good bracelet. Um, you know, when looking, I mean, they really did a good job at um, paying homage here to the um, to the Black Bay. Um, a little bit of play there, but nothing nothing that 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 I wouldn't say is uh, um, is terrible. You know, it's it's you get what you pay for, and I think in this case they did not skimp out on this on this bracelet. Um, the the clasp is just beautifully executed um nice brush on there um nice brush brush finish sorry there is no divers extension on this um you do get quick set but it's only three 
um, uh, quick adjustments there. So if you need to make adjustments on the fly, it's not as easy as say something like the uh, the Rolex um, uh, diver's extension that you that you get on Rolexes, or or even the um, the Pagani Design have a few of those, which are terrible executions of that. But uh, that's a whole other video. Um, so yeah. Uh, the one thing that I dislike about the band on this timepiece is the solid end links. So the QA on this, let me see if I can give you guys a, um, a more detailed view here. So if you take a look at the finish on this, I mean, th this is terrible. You know, this, this is very, very bad. Um, Nonetheless, it's not something that I noticed until maybe after a month of having it. I decided to swap out the bands and I flipped over the watch and I was like, holy crap, this is very, very unfinished. Um, and when you take off that link, I mean, that just feels sharp as a blade. So, yeah, that's something that they kind of dropped the ball a bit with. But again, um, this timepiece at a hundred and... I believe at the moment you can find them on Amazon. And I say Amazon because you get quicker shipping. I mean, it's like four day shipping. It's about 130 bucks, but you get also a 10% coupon, bringing it down to 116. Um, not bad. I did get this a few months ago for about 89 bucks. It was on sale. So just kind of, uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Just kind of keep an eye on these because they, they do fluctuate, especially now for the holidays. You may see some more. Um, coupons added in to make this uh, a little more accessible in terms of pricing uh, so yeah uh, case materials it is a stainless steel case um, power reserve I think I went over that at uh, 40 hour power reserve uh, the, the so the crystal on this surprisingly enough and as you can tell by the glare there's obviously no anti reflectant on this um, but the crystal on this is sapphire which is definitely going to hold up to the test of time, um, you know, in terms of scratching. Um, I really would, I, I, you know, if, if you're not going to put the anti-reflected under the glass, which is typically going to be found in the higher end um, spectrum of watches, um, then I'd rather you don't put it at all because putting it up here, it's going to get scuffed up and your watch is going to look terrible. Um, so yeah, even if it is sapphire and you put the anti-reflectant on top, it's going to look horrendous afterwards. So it's just best they didn't put it at all. They're obviously not going to put it under the glass because the process is very, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty expensive process. Uh, the bezel. So you got a 90 click bezel on this, on this watch. It's actually a very satisfying bezel to uh, click. I use these as fidgies, to be honest with you. There is a little bit of play on this bezel. Uh, you know, again, you got to remember the pricing on this watch um, when considering um, these specs. Uh, it's also an aluminum bezel insert. Uh, I love the color on this bezel, uh, on this bezel insert. Um, honestly, I have no complaints in it. Uh, in, in, the terms, in terms of the finishing of this timepiece. Now, the loom, on the other hand, terrible. I mean, it's very unevenly applied. Um, it barely, barely does any kind of, uh, I mean, it, it barely even illuminates at all. So if that's a word, I don't know. Anyways, I continue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, uh, it ticks very nicely. I love, let me see if I can get a close up here and excuse me here with my, um, my camera guys. But if you can look, I mean, this rose gold finish on the hands, beautifully done. Um, I love the, uh, the um, I want to say it's like kind of kind of a gold, um, kind of a gold train track around here. Beautifully done. Um, you know, that's why I threw it on this, on this band. Um, by the way, this band is by Rich Watch Bands. Um, I have, that's actually who I've gotten all my bands from. Uh, as a matter of fact, all my NATOs, my leathers, um, Rich Watch Band does a phenomenal job with these these bands, um, and they're pretty uh, they're pretty accessible in terms of prices. It's about a sixteen dollar um, strap. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, that's uh, basically the specs. Now we'll move on to um, basically my um, my thoughts on this timepiece. All right, so I do owe an apologies to you guys. 
I forgot to do a wrist check. So this is what I have on my wrist. This is actually a um, an Invicta, uh, I believe it's called a Speedway. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, this is a, a Speedway um, Chrono. Um, so this was really just a project that I had. Um, so I filled this watch with mineral, uh, mineral oil. If you look closely, it looks looks like a digital screen, right? The viewing angles are amazing. The legibility of this underwater is insane. Um, I was able to do this, of course, because it is a quartz, so you don't have to worry about anything getting damaged, but that's a whole nother video. Anyways, that's what I have on a rich watch strap band that I've had it for about a month now, aging very nicely. There you have it. That was the uh, wrist check. If I can get my camera back. Oops. There we go. All right, moving on back to the uh, the watch here that we're reviewing. So, some of the things that 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 really um, I, that I dislike about this timepiece is a um, couple of things. When you're wearing this, the rotor noise on this timepiece is insane. I mean, listen to this. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, another thing about this uh, timepiece that I don't like when that rotor is really spinning there, it tends to do a very awkward and weird um, kind of vibration. Like uh, you can even see the watch kind of doing this. Uh, let's see if I can show that on camera. It's going to be kind of hard, but hey, let's give it a try. Let's see, if, so you guys can get an idea of what I'm referring to. I don't know if you can see that that wobble. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy. On the hand, you know, when you have it on your wrist, it's kind of like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Overall, um, those are some of the things that I dislike about this timepiece. Another thing too is this crown, um, and sometimes it screws in very nicely, and sometimes it just like it's very gritty. Um, I'm sure that can easily be. Um, fixed with a little bit of um, maybe some um, some watch oil there. I'm, I'm sure there's some kind of grease you can use that's specifically for watches. I don't know what it's called, but nonetheless, I'm sure there is a, a something you can put on that to to to, to help fix that. Um, but those are some of the things that I don't like about the timepiece. Um, it is slightly big at 41 millimeters but i think that's really just staying here let me zoom out i think that the uh, 41 millimeters is really just staying um true to the the actual size of the uh, black bay i believe that's a 41 millimeter timepiece um it does sit kind of tall on the wrist because of its thickness uh let's see if we can get a on the wrist shot here real quick uh bear with me let me take off this other watch Oops, I keep bumping my camera. So, here we got it. We got a wrist shot here. So, overall, um, for me, it's a very comfortable timepiece. For some people, not so much. If you, if, you know, if you have anything less than a seven, um, you know, seven, what is it? Seven and a half inches um, on the wrist you're probably going to want to go with something else um, because this is going to sit very tall on the wrist and from lug to lug it's a fairly big watch um, so for some people it may hang over the wrist but for me i'm pretty satisfied with the way that sits on the wrist um, i love it um, it's a pretty nice timepiece. Um, yeah so that's a wrist shot of the uh, watch itself um, oops let's go ahead and take this back off And there's the rotor noise again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, you know, as far as aesthetics goes, this is probably one of my favorite off-brand watches. You know, I think that the finish on this is very well executed, and I'm gonna try to get some close-ups here. Just uh, bear with me. I, you know, I'm I just got started with this, so I haven't really um, gotten any new lens macro lens which is going to be probably the next thing i add to the uh, gears 
uh, make it easier to, to really get these close-ups. But uh, nonetheless, the you have a chamfered edge here, and uh, I think I can get a little closer. If you look closely there, that chamfered edge right there is nicely executed, polished nicely. And then the, the brushing effect that you get on the top of this case is amazing. I, I'm just surprised that they're able to do that at the price that they've done it. Um, another thing too, if you look closely at those hands, um, I haven't been able to see anything underneath the dial, any dust, any dust particles or anything like that. But that rose gold, those rose gold hands and the uh, hour markers, man, they really, really executed nicely on this. Um, the snowflake hands are very, I mean, they really did it just in terms of what the real Black Bay is like. Another thing I like that they did on this is, and uh, if, for anyone who's familiar with the Black Bay, and I'm sure a lot of you will be, if you look under here, the text, right, this is really paying homage to the... Uh, the uh, Tudor Black Bay that had the uh, the Eta, uh, was it the Eta movement or the Salida movement? I believe it was the Salida movement. Um, again, if I'm wrong, correct me in the uh, comments below. But uh, yeah, th there was this was before they transitioned over to the in-house movements. Um, a good way to tell when you had a Salida movement Tudor was the smiley face in the bottom. Um, so yeah, you know I think they've done a phenomenal job overall with. Um, with uh, with this timepiece, um, once again, if you're looking, um, you know, my opinion, if you're looking for something that's, if what you're wanting is to get into into watches, but you're wanting, um, you know, you're really wanting it as something that you're gonna really have for years to come, and maybe even pass down to to your kids. Do not waste, and I and I can't stress this enough. Do not waste money on these um, off brands. Really do your research buy what you want um but definitely go for these brands like seiko and 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 orient you know these companies that have they have skin in the game i mean they they have a reputation you know the and they're trying to protect that reputation as much as possible by putting out quality uh, by putting out quality timepieces um their qa is going to be unparalleled um to something like this seriously like the, the the quality control on these watches because they're making thousands of them um, and again, these are, these are being mass produced and, 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 and there is no, I mean, these things right here, according to the, uh, when I bought it, it comes with a 12 month warranty. I'm willing to bet the warranty on this will, will be honored. And that's because it's being honored by Amazon. But if you had to go to this company, right, Corgate, wherever they are, and you needed to have this, uh, timepiece replaced or repaired or whatever the case is, good luck. You know, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be. And if you buy it on uh, somewhere like AliExpress, getting that uh, warrantied out is going to be next to impossible. Um, so therefore, you know, my suggestion would be if you're really looking for something that you're not going to have any warranty issues, you're not going to have um, any quality control issues. And if you do have any kind of any kind of quality control issues, they're going to be very minute. I mean. Remember, nothing is ever perfect, but with companies like Seiko, Orient, Rolex, you know, these, these, these companies that have skin in the game, they minimize the, the uh, quality control issues as much as possible. And a lot of times, you know, you may see a quality control issues with these companies with a slightly misaligned bezel, something that can easily be fixed, but it's not something that's going to that's gonna cause you issues down the road with the watch. Um, so there you have it. That's my insight on this. That's my suggestion. If you're looking to really get yourself into watches and, and, and what you want is something that's going to last you for years to come. Um, I highly recommend you look elsewhere. Um, but again, if you're looking for something that's, uh, um, aesthetically pleasing to your eyes and, and you can care less about the specs and how long it's going to last you, Hey, take that 130 bucks and still don't buy something like this. Go get yourself an Orient or a Seiko. Trust me, you can get yourself a better timepiece for that price. Um, and Seiko has an endless amount of uh, devices in that price in that price range, and so does Orient. Uh, take a look at the Orient 3-star. You know, I got a video coming up soon on that. Um, there you have it. I swear, if I say devices or QA one more time, I'm going to lose it.